pitch and the audience. Use visual aids correctly with ease and confidence. Your time allotted is five to seven minutes, and I wish my speaker the best of luck. What can I say about the next speaker? Mm. I can say volumes. I can say so much because I've lived with her for so many years. My speaker, well not my speaker specifically, but she can be my speaker, she's, she's my sister. This speaker works multiple jobs and will always work multiple jobs because she is the epitome of a workaholic. Currently, she, has, she is the creative director and founder of Nejda Cumber Designs, showcasing her business cards that are over there, sorry. Her business cards and her graphic tablet. Didn't bring it. <laughs> sorry. Fine. No graphic tablet, but still. Doing her eighth speech entitled, How to Be a Workaholic, like I said, she was born. How I became. That's what you said to me. Okay, how to become a workaholic? Please put your hands together for Postmaster Nesha. Hi, <coughs> I'm Nesha Cumber, and I'm a workaholic. Good evening, Master of Ceremonies, fellow Toastmasters, and most honorable guests. Good evening. A workaholic is someone who is addicted to work. I am known as a special type of workaholic, but I like to call myself a class A workaholic. By that, I mean I spend all my free time doing the following things. Designing stuff to sell online for $50, picking my breath from school, picking up mail from the post office, doing some office work for my dad, doing work going to Toastmaster meetings here and there, doing Toastmaster work here, there, everywhere, going to our big classes, and all the time in between all of those things I just listed, I do even more work. Bottom line is, I like to work. I'm a workaholic during the weekends. I'm a workaholic during my not weekends. I'm a workaholic every day. Let's see where, I was, where, where all this started. Obviously, I wasn't always an addict. Like these images, here, they are proof that I was goofy, mischievous, and naughty. If you don't believe me, ask my sisters. <laughs> Life was easy before my addiction. But then, school started. That was when the first signs of workaholism appeared in myself. First sign was when I loved being the teacher's pet, like in this image with my teacher. I loved being the teacher's pet. Why? Because they would like they love giving me, you know, small work like Nezla, go bring this paper, Nezla, go bring this notebook, collect this, collect that, call this teacher, call this student. I love doing that. I was five years old and I preferred to do that than play with my classmates. Second sign of my workaholism was when I came home and I threw a gigantic tantrum. Why? Because my best friend got a higher mark than I did in one exam. I was five years old and I was determined to have a better mark than she. So I sat in my little corner and studied and studied and studied and studied for hours until I got one plus one equals two correctly. Now things didn't get bad until I dropped out of school. <laughs> yes. Like this image of embarrassing image of myself, I was miserable. I was seven years old and I got really, really sick that I was delusional, and that I developed this phobia that made me stop going to school. This was because, and because of that, my parents constantly drilled it into my head over and over again, Nejla, you don't have a future unless you went to school. And for years, that's what I believed. I believed I didn't have a future because I didn't go to school. So one day, I realized that that can't just be it. It can't just be all about school and then I'll have a future. No, there has to be another way. So I dedicated 10 years of my life trying to figure out what is that, how to build my future without school. I was miserable, of course. But like this thoughtful picture of myself, I taught myself many things. I kept a schedule of all the 
things I needed to learn and all the things I needed to practice every hour, every day, for years. I taught myself how to play the guitar, the bass, to draw, to paint, to Photoshop. In hopes that one day, one of these things would get me a future. But this determination to get my future became an obsession. It became an obsession and that was when I realized that I couldn't stop doing what I was doing. I just liked working and filling my days productively, not playing, just working on paintings, artwork, anything. And then finally, I got my future. I taught the thing, the three things that I taught myself, Photoshop, drawing and painting were the three things that got me a job with these kind people at Unisono, a branding consultancy here in Bahrain. They gave me courage to, to do anything. I went out of my comfort zone and a year later, I resigned to go back to school. I became a university student, and from then on, I studied in the morning. And then at night, I worked designing book covers for publishing companies online. Today, I opened up my own business. I have graduated, and my father trains me and my sisters to take over the business. So this is my loop of everyday life. Five hours of office work, eight hours of design work, two hours to pick up my brother from work from school, two hours of our classes, two hours of Toastmasters every other week, and so on and so forth and so on and so forth. I don't have time for myself, for my family, for my friends. I'm afraid because I would get like that every time I took a break. Every single moment I took a break, even for an hour, I would get restless. I would get anxious and angry, like really, really angry. If someone interrupted me while I was working, or if someone told me to take a break, I would get really angry. And that was when I realized that I couldn't stand being around happy people when I was working. Yes. <laughs> but that's the truth. It got really bad. My workaholism got really bad that I just, I had to do something about it. Because I was getting angry and lashing out at everyone, shouting at them for no reason. So today, I'm happy to say that I spent only four hours of work during the weekend. Not the usual 16 hours that I usually do during the weekend, but I worked four hours and I'm making progress. So this is how I became a workaholic. And if you see any of these signs in yourself, I suggest you guys take a breather, have fun, go out, be with friends and family, because our entire life will be lived off working. So have fun and always remember that you learn best in moments of enjoyment. Thank you. I have nothing to say. <laughs> <laughs> It's so bad. I'm not that good <laughs> at being workaholic. Let's just get on with it. Finally, finally, I was, I've been eager to introduce this last speaker. But first, I would like to call on the woman who is currently helping out with her family business. Is it Noreen Fashion? Showcasing her business cards, you may wave them if you like. <laughs> Toastmaster Anna. Introducing, sorry, introducing speaker Tima doing her CC1. You're doing your first project, which is the icebreaker. The objective of your project is begin speaking before an audience.